I just landed here at the Atlanta airport because today we're going to be working on the yellow card with our friends at Blackjack. And hopefully we can address all the issues of the front of the car and the back of the car. All right, folks, I am here at Blackjack and the car is already inside. We still have a couple of things that we need to address uh, on the frame machine and we're taking the measurements using the manual. Uh, sorry, it started raining out of nowhere. So we're gonna take the measurements of the car. Like I mentioned before, the uh, distance between rail to rail, they were 29 inches uh, based on the book. But uh, the actual measurement on the yellow car, it is 28 point, 28 and a quarter. So it's off by like three quarters of an inch. So we're gonna have to uh, address the situation and hopefully we can get everything up to spec before uh, we slice the car and fix the uh, river car and the uh, fire car. And this is how our day at Black Yacht begins. We loaded the NSX onto the frame machine effortlessly, thanks to its lightweight aluminum body. As we were loading the car on the frame machine, Adam noticed something a bit concerning. The driver's side front rail was not only pushed in, but also downwards compared to the passenger side front rail, adding another issue that we're gonna have to address while the car is at the shop. Once the car was securely loaded into the frame machine, we proceeded to clamp it down to fix its position before tackling any issues at front. Upon getting the car on the frame machine, we placed the label on the rails, confirming the misalignment of the driver's side front rail. Before diving into any repairs, we took measurements of the front of the car using the repair manual in a gauge tram to assess how far off we were from OEM spec. As we began to grind off the spot wells, a very unique smell started to fill up our working space, giving us a hint of what we were about to uncover. What we initially thought was welding spots covered by paint when the previous owner changed the color of the car, turned out to be loads of JB weld applied to the seams of the support radiator bar and other areas of the front rail. At first glance, it wasn't apparent, but as we started grinding the so-called spot wells, we noticed that someone thought it was a great idea to substitute actual weld for JB weld to keep certain areas of the car together. After grinding off the spot wells, we positioned the chains right next to the affected area so we can finally start doing some pulling out and up from its previous position. Before commencing the pulls, we had to do some welding underneath the front rail since the bottom side of it was split from the previous axis. This way, we could ensure that the front rail would move as a whole while we're doing the pulls and not just one section of it. After retaking some measurements from the front of the car, we were getting really close to where we want to be spec-wise on the front of the car. 28 5 eighths. If I'm doing that correctly. Ooh, we're up. That's what I'm saying. It's, I think it's still low in the center of the frame rail. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, that's pretty righteous. Um, anything we're a little, a little open, but when we let off, it's gonna come back some. How far are we? Um, the bottom is pretty much that's 733 As we continue pulling and pushing the driver's side front rail, some of the spot wells on the inner section of the front rail snapped, likely because they were kinked from the previous accident. We proceeded to mark the upper section of the front rail close to the suspension so we can go back and address those issues when we were done with the front section of the car. Yep. And there's our broken weld. There's our first weld pop. And so now we get that the what that wherever that cracked was more than likely wherever it was kinked and that spot just let go. As we continue to realign the driver's side front rail, we also kept track of the alignment points on the front of the car. This demanded a constant re-measurement of the alignment points to see how far we were from an optimal OEM spec. It was an arduous work because every time we either pull out or pushed up the front rail, all the alignment points move as well. One thing that we wanted to avoid at all costs was overstressing that particular section of the car by applying too much pressure and potentially causing more damage to the vehicle. A few moments later. Right, today is number two of us working on the yellow car. Uh, so far, we addressed most of the issues on the front of the car. We've been working on the front driver's side rail. Uh, we found whoever worked on the car in the past, they didn't really weld properly the front rail. They were just uh, covering the seams with JB weld. 
uh, so it made it seem that it was actually welded but the moment you start scratching all this JB weld from the uh, corners of the front rail then you notice that everything was split and then we actually have to re-weld it again so that's what we're doing at the moment for the most part we've been taking measurements from the front of the car com and comparing it to the uh, OEM repair manual and we are very close to have the car how we want it uh, as seen right now they are doing some welding and uh, let me show you We're gonna keep grinding, it's very loud in there, so I didn't wanna uh, have you guys uh, listen to all the noise. Uh, but you know, we are very close to get the car how we want it. And then when we're done on the front of the car, we are gonna be working on the uh, back of the car and address the issues that we have with the uh, welding of the rear plate from the NSX. So yeah, we keep grinding, we're gonna get it done. And uh, now I have to go back <laughs> inside and help them out. So stay tuned. This is how we began our day number two at Blackjack, by remeasuring all the alignment points on the front of the car and compare our numbers with the ones on the repair manual. Before we could move to the back of the car, we found that the cross member beam from the steering rack was a bit of place. So we have to work on the driver's side suspension area so we can bring it up to spec. Right, so what we're doing right now is taking measurements of our body alignment points and everything is pretty square right now so we're gonna continue running the numbers and make sure everything is square before we move to the back of the car we find a lot of JB weld right lots of JB weld I'm covering their uh, for welding skills so we're gonna try to uh, address that pretty soon, but we just wanna make sure the car is straight, uh, like I said, before we do anything else. So that's what we're doing at the moment. After a few more hours of work, we were finally done addressing the front end of the car. Everything was pretty square and very close to OEM spec, but we still had to address the issues with the steering rack cross member beam, which was off by a few millimeters. Our best guess that was also affected when the car was in the accident. This misalignment won't allow the bolts to connect to the lower control arm bracket. We wanted to take care of everything at front before we move and take care of the back of the car. After multiple tries, we were finally able to address the issue with the cross member beam. All the bolts line up with the lower control arm bracket and we were finally able to move to the back of a car and address the rear plate. Since aligning the steering rack cross member beam took way longer than expected, we had to stay one extra day in Georgia so we can finally start taking care of the rear of the car. In most areas of the rear section of the car, we found that the welding wasn't sufficient enough. Whoever worked on this NSX in the past didn't apply enough heat to penetrate the aluminum, leaving only partial welds on the rear plate of the car, where most of them were just sitting on top of the metal without effectively connecting the rear plate and the trunk of the car. After some grinding and a bit of hammering to align the rear trunk plate, we were finally ready to do some welding and attach the trunk and the rear plate once and for all. So we addressed most of the issues with the car. Uh, the front of the car is um, up to spec. We took all the measurement points from the manual. Um, we also addressed the uh, issues that we have previously with the steering rack. It was a bit of place. We addressed that too. Most of the uh, welding span, they were not hot enough. So they were not really like welding anything. They were like just a bit of uh, welding on top and nothing in the middle or out back. So we have to address that, regrind most of the holes and clean them up and put more uh, welding in between. So the back of the car is one unit. So um, 
I'm gonna go and show you what we've done so far and we're gonna wrap up the video like that um, because we're gonna take the car back to Maryland and I start section eight to work on the river and the fire car so let me show you so we have to fix that 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 all the area that was just hanging in there so we fixed it too the car straight there let me show you that there's some spot walls on the bottom uh, we still decided if we're gonna replace this whole bar or not um, we tried the issues with the uh, front of the car this section, let me see if I can get some light here. The other section was split, so we have to address that. And we should be all good to go. So we can take the car. <laughs> Back to Maryland, so we can uh, start working on the section of the river car and the fire car. And start getting uh, the uh, project into phase number two which is welding the two halves together and uh, put the car back into the frame machine to make sure everything is aligned properly and we start putting the cars in the pin boot and get them ready for a uh, show very soon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and comment our videos. Please consider subscribe to our channel as well as visit our other media accounts at Helix Auto Works on Instagram and Facebook.